Hi there, once again, welcome to Speed Skating Deconstructed. What makes a skater great? Always trying to learn, trying to chisel stuff out of the skating history we have before us. And looking at Gerard Kemkers today in his uh, 5,000 meter at the Olympics in 1988, one of the finest all arounders of the 1980s, one of the finest coaches ever, of course, of Sven Kramer and Irene Wust and many others uh, through the last. Uh, you know, about through 2016, uh, he was coaching. But uh, great skater in so many ways, and I wanted to show you a couple things. Straightaways are pristine and clean, so really nice straightaways. Corners have a little flaw in them, which I want to show you, and the, the lesson there is you don't have to be perfect to be successful. So that's it. We're all works in progress. So Gerard did the best with what he had at the time, and I'm sure he'll look at this and say, yeah, you know, I, I, think, I think I see that too. And second thing, just a fierce competitor. Never, ever gives up. In fact, he wiped out in the 10,000, got up, and still got either third or fourth um, in that race. I believe he won a bronze medal uh, with a fall. So just never, never quit. So that's the main lesson. Gerard is a fighter, and he backs it up with great effort. So let's just look at his straightaway here. Nice exit. Clean and off that. Nothing extra here. Not throwing anything up into the stands. You know, just putting it down into the ice and moving with that lead skate. So nice relaxation already. You can see there's a little bit of up and down movement, but that's because he's a narrow guy. Look how narrow his hip structure is. So for narrow guys like him, like me, it was harder for us to get out over here. Therefore, you had to be early off this skate, come up over it just a little, and then exert that pressure right away to the other skate. And he does that very well. Let's watch it in slow motion. Nice rhythm, very clean blades, great timing, very disciplined, very disciplined technique if you watch it in, in slow motion and straight away, I mean in regular motion. Not getting as much rest as someone like Mr. Eminger here, who is like a dinosaur on the ice. He's huge. Um, just massive legs and a really long upper body. You know, I'd sit next to him, you know, putting our skates on anywhere in the world, and and uh, he was about five to six inches shorter than me, but three inches taller than me when he sits down. <laughs> so his upper body was really long. It helps him get over his skate nicely. He's just got all this rest here. It was a walk in the park for him in the straightaways due to his anatomy. Anyway. I wanted to show you just a quick flaw in Gerard's turns. He builds his turns really well, really builds. But you can see a flaw here, and tell me if you see it. What do you see? A collapsed ankle. All this energy is being thrown away. I mean, not all of it, but he could get a lot more out of it if he stayed with this blade, pushed down harder against it, moved as the blade stayed straight instead of collapsing. So really working it out of the glute instead of the quad and, and the, the calf here. But as you can see, it's a collapsed pressure. Therefore, the left comes down a little too soon instead of driving forward, dropping in here. And the right push, is he's not getting a lot out of that right because it's gone already because of the collapsed ankle. So just nonetheless, he really builds his turns well. Always building his turns. So... Just a little lesson there, and you don't have to be perfect, and even the greats are not perfect. But what I wanted to really show you about this race was spectacular, and he builds into it 31.7 eventually here, um, 31.8, 31.7 next lap. But I wanted to show you is something phenomenal. And you don't see it anymore, and I'm wondering if it's an artifact of the collapse gate. And I'll show you what I mean. So watch this end. Obviously fatigued, you know, he could barely get that push through. You know, he was faltering, his balance, he was losing his balance. He had so much lactate in his legs and he was so fatigued that he was losing his balance at the end. He could barely make it through the line. And now we see him just totally beat, you know, just done. He can barely breathe. Watch this. This is what I want to show you. He's in agony here kind of just plop himself down on the pads and you can see he's just really just completely done completely fatigued and just toast you know he's in agony right now 
cardiovascularly. His legs are in fire. There's Hank Gemser, his great coach, Visser, who won the, gold, the silver medal right there. But you don't see that anymore. You, you know, these guys now, they cross the line with two arms up and, uh, you know, they're waving the crowd and picking up, uh, you know, flowers off the ice. It's really weird. I'm not sure if it's an artifact of the clap. I think it must be because maybe there's a mechanism in distance skating in the clap that you just can't get as tired as you used to. I'm not sure about that, but I don't see people collapsing anymore. I see people skating around almost like, hey, that was nice, and maybe I could do another one. Anyway, just an observation. Hope you learned something from this, and we'll see you next time on Speed Skating Deconstructed. What makes a skater great?